Have you been paying any attention to the, the, the movie industry? I mean, it seems just this week there were just more and more advertisements for blockbuster movies and all the rest of it. Have you noticed how many of these movies are now grossing over four to six hundred thousand dollars? Sometimes within a few weeks, but you know, in the lifespan of that particular movie. What, what does that say? Well, it says that Americans have money. You got that kind of money? You got enough money to go drop 20 bucks on a movie? I don't. I wouldn't spend $20 to go see a good, great, one-of-a-lifetime movies. It's not good value. I'll read the book. <laughs> I'll get the YouTube. I'll read the reviews. Somebody else will tell me about it. I'm guessing a significant amount or number of people that, that we consider to be poor also went to the movies and spent twelve, fifteen, twenty dollars for a ticket. New York is a lot more expensive than Podunk. I'm guessing that a large percentage of these people who don't really have a lot of money are walking around with an $800 cell phone. What do you think? Mine costs 200 bucks, and that's only because it's the cheapest one you can buy. Guess what? It does 87 more things than I have need of. And I don't sit and uh -huh, mm, and play with it. They got $800 for a cell phone. They got $15 for a movie every few weeks or so. People have money. Today we talk about poor people. And very often, the idea, the word of poor is a way to refer to how people spend their money, not how much they actually have. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't truly poor in and amongst us. And I know very few people whose hearts are not open to them whenever they run across such people. But the idea of poor is just way too large. There are people in this world who have millions and billions of dollars. One percent of the population. And there are people in this world who barely have enough to get by. Maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year raising five children. You know, that ain't nothing. Some people have less than that. Some of it is their own fault. Some of it is not. There is a genetic form of poverty where people just cannot help themselves. They're never going to be able to achieve. There's deliberate poverty. People who just won't work, won't get training. I live in an area now where, I mean, they're begging for people. Every institution around is offering to train people for jobs that pay a living wage. Uh, companies around here will train you to do. I just met a man this week that I'd known a couple years ago. Uh, and I said, what are you doing these days? He said, well, I'm, uh, I work for Mercedes. I'm inspecting the welds on the trucks they're making here in town. I said, you're not a welder? <laughs> no, he wasn't. Hell no, he said, they sent me to school. He's about a 40-something-year-old man. He wanted to just stop fooling around and, and get something that was going to pay him some more money for less hours and all that. 
they sent him to school and now he white shirt clean fingernails and he's inspecting welds you could do that you could do that we've got folks around here i know one young fellow that uh didn't really have a job that he could live off of he's just out of high school so it wasn't all that critical but he got a job with volkswagen they sent him to sweden for three weeks he works on a team that if a car comes off the line it doesn't work properly goes over there and the team fixes it ah, who knew he had that kind of ability they trained him that's the way our world is going today but then there's political poverty this is the poverty that is government inspired do you know what that means a government that has consistently for two or three generations now paid people not to work they didn't set out to do that at least i hope they didn't but that's the end result they gave them enough they didn't care if they got a job and if they had a need the government would come up with something else to help them with that as well and then there's the social poor there's a social poverty people that are more committed to the social technology than they are to education or to industry of any kind and in amongst all of that are the actual poor most of the poverty in above the actual poor is just the misuse of life opportunities and the money you do have most people that are on the low end of the spectrum cannot afford to go to the movies but they do it all the time with eight hundred dollar cell phones fifty dollar cable bills what else clothes maybe even cars do you have a budget do you know where every penny of your money goes I hate it when people say that because I have no idea I don't keep track of the pennies I keep track of the dollars <laughs> I have money in my pocket and the money in my pocket is mine to do with as I see fit I can buy licorice or I can buy a car if it's the money in my pocket it's not coming for out of any other issue or item in my life and I am free as a bird now I do realize that every three weeks or so I need to get a haircut and that costs fourteen dollars so I gotta you know make sure when that time comes around you got the money in your pocket that doesn't mean I don't have money in my checkbook I could just go and do it but I don't want to do it that way I want to pay for these little things out of cash most people today who are struggling are doing so because they're not watching where the money goes they don't know how much it takes for them to live they just know what they get in their paycheck and it's not enough they don't realize that they have to cut back and where they have to cut back are on the things they like the most uh, not sleeping eating <laughs> going to the dock but you know the entertainment kinds of things and they don't want to have to give that up but if you are living above your means the day is coming when that airplane is going to crash and burn you can't just keep running up credit card debt well you can and when you reach the point where you can't pay it the credit card company will come after you and if you hold them at bay at some point they will sell that off 
to debt collectors who will hound you for another six or eight years. And if you don't pay it, you'll never get another credit card. <laughs> Your credit rating is, is dead. I had a, had a young fellow in the van this week who had his car fixed. He was from Massachusetts. He was visiting here over the weekend. Car broke down. Had to get it worked on. It was, it was, oh, it was going to cost him $1,200. It was awful. The next day, I went to pick him up, and they had called to tell him, oh, by the way, it cost $1,600 because there was other things when they got in there. Can you, can you take me over to the bank? Sure. We went over to the bank. He went in, came back out, and he says, they won't give me any money off of this card because I already used it today, and I can't use it for that amount of money. I said, what are you going to do? He said, well, I got another bank card. Take me over there. So I went across the street to another bank. I sat there while he put it in the machine. It came back, no funds available. And he knows he has money, but it won't give him any. Why not? Because the credit card companies, the banks, talk to each other, <laughs> and you're going to get stuck. Your credit score, your credit rating is important, and you will end up going to the government for help. And if you're not careful, you'll make that your life's destiny and your children as well. That's what's going on in our society. It's symptomatic when we look at the movies and the huge amount of money that they're drawing. For what? but it's everything else as well. You need a budget. Talk to somebody that knows how to handle money. Be ruthless. Your car is going to break down. It is going to cost you a thousand dollars. Wow, wow, wow. These cars are highly sophisticated. I'm driving people around for Toyota. I know what they're paying. I know what I just paid a week or so ago for catalytic converters on my wife's van. And we've had that long enough, that's the second time. <laughs> it's got about 250,000 miles on it. They don't last forever. Other things, huge amount of money. I mean, just every, what, 60, 80, 90,000 miles, you've got to... Uh, your timing belt has to be changed. And if you're going to change your timing belt, you better change your water pump while you're in there because you got to take all the same stuff off to get to it. You might as well do it. Thousand dollars. <laughs> nope, probably. You got it? You need to save it up. Your air conditioner in the car, in the house goes out. You got to call somebody. You're not going to get away with less than three to five hundred dollars. Go put that on the card. You shouldn't. You will be on the slide heading down. And that's what our culture is doing to us. They are encouraging us this way. You want to be part of the lemmings heading into the depths, or do you want to stand above it? <laughs> 